Destry Abbott here with DA Training. Uh, today we're going to talk about bike setup, how important it is to set the bike up the right way. It's kind of like a race car. You know, if the car is going to push, it's the same thing. When I do my classes on setting up a bike, you know, making sure it's turning or it's tracking or whatever it is for motocross, endurocross, off-road racing, so important. No matter how good you are, I can tell you the most important thing for me is bike setup, suspension. Um, these bikes nowadays are phenomenal, and that's when it comes down to setting up the suspension or whatever it is, so, you know, levers, handlebars, things like that. Uh, super important. So uh, today we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, bike setup is probably the number one thing for me. You know, we talked about how good these bikes are nowadays, but everybody weighs different. Everybody's at a different level. You got a 240-pound guy, a 150-pound guy, and the rider level you know, is a lot different. So, you know, the bikes come with a good startup point, but at the same time, that's probably the number one thing that I do is, is change my internal settings on these bikes nowadays and uh, to suit my style, you know, and it depends on if I'm riding rocks, extreme riding, or then I go to the motocross track, I don't use that same suspension for sure. You know, I have, luckily I have a couple different bikes or a couple different sets of suspension. And if you don't have that, it's amazing what you can do with compression, rebound, you know, by going in on high speed, you can change that bike a lot with setup. And, uh, you know, that's getting back to the rider sag, things like that. It's honestly, I do a lot of training with a lot of riders with D8 training. And I can tell you, there's so many guys that have never even checked their rider sag. And when I help them set up their rider sag, they're a completely different rider because that bike was either pushing or it was so unstable that they were actually scared. And then when we got it to where it's at neutral position to where they could stand and they're confident and comfortable on the bike, the bike reacts so much better. And that's when they build that confidence and become a better rider also. So a lot of it depends on the type of racing you're doing. You know, if I'm back east, of course, I want that bike to turn a lot more. If I'm out in California racing a Heron Hound or a Works Big Six, something like that, I want the bike to be more trackable. It's going to be higher speed. So I'll run less or more rider sag, meaning the bike will be a little lower in the rear, which is going to make that bike track and make it's going to go straighter. But at the same time, you're not going to get that uh, cornering as much as you want. The bike's not going to be as uh, limber as far as like turning it. Where on the East Coast, when I go back there, we would have our bike set up to where it would corner really well. It wouldn't uh, be as controlled as far as high speed stuff, but that's the same thing like Enduro Cross. So bike setup is super important, especially when it comes down to that suspension. I know personally for myself, you know, when we're doing Enduro Cross, I run around 104 and we run a gummy tire with the Nitro Moose, so it's a little softer. So it's actually gonna sit a little lower. So I actually want that bike to be level. I'm big about having my bike being level, being, uh, knowing what it's gonna do, basically. That's the biggest thing for me is uh, being predictable. That's, that's a number one goal. I'm like, if I know my bike's really good in certain areas and other areas, it might not be as good, but being predictable is, uh, is number one for me and confidence. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you run in a, a faster, higher speed race, maybe 108, 110 on the KTMs, and every bike's a little bit different. It's learning, learning where that, that sweet spot is itself. And uh, you're definitely gonna notice a difference. Same thing with the forks. I actually like playing with my shock height more than I necessarily do in my front end. I, I notice a bigger difference, especially on the track, tracking ability. That's, uh, that's super important. And like, like back to that predictability, that's, uh, that's the number one thing. For motocross, motocross is a lot like off-road, you know, it's, it depends. If I'm riding sand, of course, I want my front end higher because there's so much more weight going to that front end where it's going to be pushing. So now I'm going to run, you know, a higher number in the rear, like maybe 108, 110, same thing, to where if it's a hard pack track, I actually want a little bit less because now I want a little bit more load on that front end to help that bike turn and actually track. I can move my weight back, fluctuate the weight. So uh, having the right tools to set up that bike, and as you see with the slacker tool, this is one of the easiest ways, especially when I come out by myself, I can set it up, boom, I'm done. I pretty much, almost every other ride at least, Cooper and I are always checking our rider sag. This is something that any of my mechanics will tell you. I was super picky about suspension setup, and uh, this tool I wish I had years ago because uh, it makes it a lot easier for me.